Before I start with my lecture, uh, well, again, a few, a few words of introduction. Well, uh, all my life I was medical physicist. I started 1980 when I finished my Master of Science, physics. And, well, what was important for me, and I think it would be inform important also for you, that to be a medical physicist is not only to be a physicist, but also to be a human who serves for other people. And that was really important for me because all my life I was humanist, not mathematician, not physicist, but I was enough good in mathematics and enough good in physics. So I told myself I can be in the same time I can use my skills to mathematics and to physics and so also to serve to people. So please remember that your work is, well, focused on people. <coughs> well, what, what was my uh, major interest? Major interest was treatment planning and dosimetry. However, I'd like to emphasize strongly that dosimetry is, the, the, I think, the most important task for physicists, because your task is to measure. First of all is to measure. The second task is to model. So please remember that if you think about, because people are really very crazy about treatment planning, because they think it's very nice to play with computer, to, to prepare plans, and so on. But the most important task is dosimetry. So dosimetry is, should be in, in the center of your Heart. So starting from dosimetry, uh, well, her uh, name was the, the lecturer? Eugenia. 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 Told you about the spoiler. I just, uh, well, took from my computer the example of spoiler, how spoiler works, because this is, oh, these are measurements made by one of my Master of Science students many years ago, where you uh, have <coughs> no, it's, it's much easier just to show to you. You have this setup of measurements. It's water phantom and the spoiler above of that phantom. And you have several curves. Here is the first lesson in Polish. Spuito means just with spoiler, and this is open field. Okay? And you may see how the depth of those curves. It's here. Okay, thank you how depth those curves are changed by moving the spoilers to the surface of the, of the phantom. Why? Because you create electrons. Crea uh, well, just interaction, Compton interaction makes that you create a fluence of electrons. They reach the surface of the phantom and that will change the dose distribution. So that's the way you can change the dose distribution of your, of your beads. So that's just for good start. And now, well, my, my uh, presentation is devo devoted to IGR team. Well, but because I see that not everybody is very well waken up, so let's make such an exercise. What is prerequisite for good, efficient, not radiotherapy, but for skiing? It's clear. We should have skis. We should, we should have snow, skill. We should have mountains, okay? Uh, but what is needed for radiotherapy, okay? Let's start. I will dra write down on the table what is prerequisite for good radiotherapy. What do you think? Good machine, okay. Okay, what more? 
staff. Well trained staff. Okay. What more? Louder. Dosimetry. Good dosimetry devices. Okay. Okay. Okay, and four. Quality assurance. Okay, let's let's leave it with dosimetry devices. It's part of, of well, let, let's call it that it's part of dosimetry devices. But I agree with you. Yeah. Communication. Communication. Well defined protocol. Well defined protocol. Patient. <laughs> of course, without the patient, there is no need for radiotherapy. Then then we will be really lucky. I have a friend of mine. He is a doctor. And he says that. Hospital is the perfect place for work, but the problem are patients. So. <laughs> <laughs> Training. Well, let's it live with well-trained staff. Okay, protocols. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Oh, that's that's important, I think. But okay, well, communication. Yes. Uh, you, you said? Planning system. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Sorry. Uh, wh what, is, what is treatment planning system in general? Prescription according to the mm -hmm. yeah. I would call it ability to calculate dose distribution. Okay, but c because it doesn't matter, it's treatment planning system. Now we all we think about computers. But when I start, everything was done manually. So that was also good radiotherapy. So ability, okay, let's say, let's say treatment planning system, call it. Okay, now try to arrange it. What would be the first? Diagnostics. Uh, well, okay, that's my choice. That staff is at the first place. Because without staff, we can do anything. We can have machines, we can have dosimetry, we can have treatment planning system, but without staff, we cannot do anything. What staff? Uh, where is staff? Well, I think about, at the first place, physicists. Without good physicists, there is no good radiotherapy. You may have ingenious doctors, ingenious radiation technologies, but if you don't measure, if you don't prepare tools, without tools, there is no radiotherapy. It cannot be good radiotherapy. So remember, we are the most important chain in radiotherapy. Of course, might be it's not the good way to tell to doctors that. But <laughs> anyway, remember about about that. So we have medical physicists, we have doctors, and we have radiation technologies. All of you, all grief groups of people are very important in radiotherapy, okay? Please remember about that. So don't, for, for example, don't forget about radiation technologies. They also have to be very well trained. And it's also your responsibility to train these people. The second one, well, might be diagnostic or might be good machine, yeah? Well, that's difficult to say. B, let's say B prime. Okay, but let's discuss a little bit what does it mean good machine? What for you is good machine? Calibrated machine. Well, modular. 
measure modulus beta and calibrate it. Okay. Well, I tell you my opinion about that. I will call, call that point as a radiation, not the machine, but first of all radiation. And to have good radiotherapy, we should have photons of enough high energy. If you have such a source of radiation, of course, not in very poor condition. But then, do, do you hear me? Yes? Or there is, yeah. Then you are able to prepare good plan. When I start my career, we have only cobalt units. So if you come from the country where there is no very modern accelerator, but there are cobalt units, you may prepare a very good treatment plan. You may treat properly your patients. Because what, let's say, treats your patient is not machine itself, but the radiation. And radiation for, from cobalt units is exactly the same as from very modern Electa variant Siemens machine. OK. Next, I think that the very important is dosimetry and dosimetry devices, OK? Yeah, and well, communication and treatment planning is also important. Yeah, OK. okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I fully agree with you. It's quality, it's, it's quality control. So I just place it in my mm, uh, presentation, all this information. But certainly modern radiotherapy and good radiotherapy is based on image information. Why is so important? If you can see, you can keep it. If you can keep it, you can see. If you can't see, you don't know where ionizing radiation should be delivered. And to deliver precisely the ionizing radiation, you must have a dosimetric description of the absorbent. From physicist's point of view, these two things are very important. Because if you have images from CT, you have density, and you have the position of different anatomical structures. So then you are able to prepare good, good plan. But remember that not only topography is important, but also dosimetric information about your patient. So you should calibrate your CT. You should have the transfer from Hansfield units to electron density. That's also one of the tasks of medical physicists. Ah, I can change from here. So we should know where ionizing radiation should be delivered, and we must be able to check if what we do is what we had planned to do. And this is the narrow meaning of IGRT, image-guided radiotherapy. So according to, to Wikipedia, IGRT is the process of frequent two- and three-dimensional imaging during a course of radiation treatment used to direct radiation therapy utilizing the imaging coordinates of the actual radiation treatment plan. Just simply the utilizing images to make the actual plan as much as possible identical with what had been planned. This is IGRT. However, in a broad sense, modern Oh, sorry, it's a mistake. Modern radiotherapy, the entire modern radiotherapy is driven by images. So images are very important. When I started, there was no CT. We had no such data. We just used the anatomical atlas of the patients, and doctors draw the contours based on that atlas. But the precise <coughs> information was not accessible for, for us. And that was really dangerous for our patients. <coughs> well, so the aim of IGRT. We plan, and usually the plan is beautiful. 
Dow's distribution is very conformal. Well, everything is nice. But when we come to, to realization, it's not as beautiful as before. Because everything can be destroyed. Everything can be destroyed, yeah? Well, optimist, uh, pessimist says it cannot be worse, but optimist says it can be. Yeah. So even plan can be destroyed by our activities. Okay. So plan with IGRT is much better. It's not exactly as we had planned, because always we make some mistakes, some at least very small errors in our work. So we have a cycle. We have plan beautiful plan, we have realization without IGRT, and we have plan which is corrected by IGRT. What images we use for IGRT? We use 3D images, which is computerized tomography. What in general images we, we use? From ma magnetic resonance, now it comes area of magnetic resonance, I think also to radiotherapy. Positron emission tomography. In our country, very often we use positron emission tomography images just for drawing contours, ultrasound. And we use 2D images, which mostly are electronic photon imaging images. So what does it mean to make the actual plan as much as possible identical with what had been planned? We have reference object which we have at this stage of planning, and we have actual object we got during the treatment. Uh, please remember that, well, most of protocols are based on conventional fractionation when we deliver 20, 25, even 30 times the same plan. So every day we have to very precisely follow our, our plan. Of course, this reference object planning, uh, object, uh, the, the reference object and actual object are related, are placed with respect to coordinate system. So the coordinate system plays a very important role in your daily routine work. And the coordinate system is defined by laser system. So laser systems should be checked regularly. We, in our hospital, every day our radiation technologists are obliged to check whether the laser coordinate system, in some extent, is, is set up properly. Every week we do it ourselves, medical physicists. OK, so you can imagine that we have plant image and we have actual image and immediately you realize that there is a difference because the bones are placed in different place with respect to 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 beam uh, edges okay so that's the way we compare so if we overlay these two images using bones, we can measure the distance along two perpendicular axes, and we can measure the angle of rotation. And that's the result of quality control, which says us how well the plan is being performed. And in my opinion, this is one of the most important quality control during the irradiation. I will come back to that problem in my second lecture, OK? OK, but how objects are recognized? What does it mean we recognize objects? And now the question to you. Do you know what's, what is in that image? Tree, yes, there is a tree. At that small animal, what? Panda. Well, that's also always shocked me. Because in my country, everybody recognizes it immediately. 
because this is taken from a very famous book by Milne, Winnie the Pooh. This is the Winnie the Pooh, and how it's strongly related to the culture. In our culture, it's clear that it's Winnie the Pooh. Everybody recognizes it. But why I show that image? Because if you look at that animal, you may immediately, well, notice there is only one line. And there is no doubt that is Winnie the, the Pooh. Because how we recognize objects? Uh, we recognize <coughs> objects by edges. If you look at people, if you look at different objects, we don't look at colors. We don't look at, I don't know what, structure. We look at edges. And we have to be familiar with edges to recognize an object. For example, that's why for white people, all black people are the same. Because we have no experience looking at these faces and vice versa. For black people, it's difficult. They say, well, everybody is the same. Have exactly the same face. Because it's the way we learn. And please remember that exactly is the same if you, if you use medical images. You have to spend some time to be acquainted with images to recognize them. Sometimes physicists also involved in using images, medical images. What is H? H is a second derivative of intensity. So mathematically, it's calculated that way. And the problem is that it's always very noisy. So Whenever we overlay two images, it's some kind of mathematically based driven minima minimization what is at one object and what is on the another object. So we always make a very small, let's say, errors. We don't know how to overlay them very precisely. <coughs> So verification of treatment plan involves comparison, mostly, comparison of portal images acquired during a treatment fraction with a reference image. But tell me, what should be a reference image when you prepare your plan? What's your opinion? DRR. Are there any other ideas? Digitally reconstructed radiograph. You know what's that? It's yeah. image which is reconstructed from CT, from CT uh, data. Well, I ask you that question because, uh, due to history, uh, uh, sometimes we use as a reference object simulator films. So the sequence is patient. CT data, treatment plan, simulator, from simulator to accelerator. And then we treat simulator film, simulator images as a reference. Why that solution is not the best one? Because I agree with you that to take digitally reconstructed radiographs is much better than to take simulator images. Why? On DRRs, you don't see soft tissue. No, on 2D images, you cannot yeah. see. No. You can have a DTR, computerized no. radiograph. You can have two the soft tissue and the DRR, because the depth is not so good for mm -hmm. OK. Don't worry, I don't criticize. I just yeah. talk to you. Mm -hmm. Because what is simulator? Simulator is another type of accelerator. Why we are going to treat simulator differently from the accelerator? It's just we just transfer the object from planning 
to another machine. And in that sense, the another machine is just simulator. So we can make the so-called transfer error. So if we get reference images from the unit where we made transfer error, we start from the wrong images. So it's much better to start from CT directly to accelerator, from digitally reconstructed radiographs to accelerator itself. Okay? So I see that you don't understand me fully, but I, I cannot explain that better. So might be later on, if you have question, come to me and we can we can discuss. So but remember that you should always limit a number of transfer points. Yeah? So directly from planning to, to treatment. Then your references is the right one. OK. Uh, of course, you, you, you mentioned about the quality of images, soft tissue, well, bones, and so on. We can improve the quality of our images with different ways of mathematical methods, with different filters. And remember that, that we have different filters even well delivered to you as a user in your uh, treatment planning system, in your uh, verify uh, and record system. And please be acquainted with that. Just learn how to, how to correct your images to make easier the work which is, which is performed by radiation technologists because mostly they overlay, they match images, okay? Um, but remembering about uh, IPIDs, about electronic portal images, which you use to get images uh, during irradiation, please remember that it's also the part of your quality control. These images should be also controlled. I mean, electronic portal imaging devices itself. So, we have the following test, mechanical electrical safety, safety of mounting of the EPID, operation of collision system. Uh, well, you should check whether the anti-collision system works properly because really you can, you can damage your, your patient with that tool. The very important is geom geometrical reproducibility. If the center of if it should, uh, the center of if it should conform to the central axis, and that should be checked very, with very simple tests: image quality, spatial and contrast resolution, and software performance. And please really treat that that seriously. In uh, my experience, there was a mistake, an error in software which was delivered by the company, and we found it making such a tests. So we, we see the differences. Well, there was no error, but the software informed us that there is an error of about four to five millimeters. We found that error, and we corrected. We, we sent a letter to, to, to the company, and they corrected. Also, vendors usually recommend some tests, and calibration should, should be made regularly. Dark, for example, dark current or noise, uniformity of, of image should be checked, but they have their own test that should be followed regularly, <coughs> and once a week, once a month, once a year. Okay? Uh, also, linearity, distortion of images should be eliminated. Simple phantoms can be used can be used for that. You have very good uh, document on that, uh, published in Journal of Applied Clinical Medical Physics, how to, to use these phantoms. It's free. Access to that journal is free, so you can read that, uh, that paper. Uh, there are specialized phantoms uh, that can be used for that task. Of course, they are very costly, so not everybody can have them. But anyway, you can prepare your own phantoms if you try to, to do that. Mm. Well, I'm surprised because there is, I don't see it here, but there is also very good 
document recommendation written by uh, AAPN, and you can find it in the internet. It's free. There is free access to the quality control uh, re quality controls recommendations. So mostly we. Uh, to control the position of the patient, we get to orthogonal images. It can be uh, taken with megavoltage radiation and kilovoltage radiation. Of course, kilovoltage radiation uh, gives much better quality of energy images in comparison to megavoltage radiation. But why, my dear physicists? Okay. okay, I see that we know that in case of kilovoltage radiation, we have more uh, photoelectric effect, which depends on atomic number, but Compton effect doesn't depend on, 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 on uh, atomic number, so we can't see very well bones. With kilovoltage radiation, we can see, we can see bones. Okay, so it's, of course it's much better to use kil kilovoltage images, but not always it's, uh, we, we, we have kilovoltage machines uh, well at the place, so we have to use megavoltage images, and that's also very good quality, quality control. But what is, what, what the problem we have with cobalt unit if we want to make portal images? And that's the real difference between cobalt units and accelerators. All our differences are, are not so important. That really makes the difference between cobalt units and accelerator. Oh, wow, how much time I have? My time passed, okay, but I have four minutes more because it was... Okay. Yes. Yes, that's right. But that's not something which makes difference. Yeah, that's right. Because at cobalt units, it's it's all. In general, it's impossible to say where is the edge of the beam. But you measure the position of your bones, of your internal structures, with respect to edges of the beam. So if you don't see, you can't make a decision. If you don't know where is your edges, where are your edges, sorry, where are your edges, you cannot place your, your object because well, I think for you it's, it's clear that for accelerator penumbra is penumbra is about four to five millimeters, but for cobalt units it's 12 to 16 millimeters. So here you, you may make a mistake of let's say one, two millimeters. But we don't make it, but anyway. But here, the room for making a mistake is really very, very wide. So that was, uh, well, that is really, well, disadvantage of cobalt, cobalt unit. Not energy, not other, well, features of cobalt unit, but white penumbra. Not because the dose distribution is worse. It's worse a little bit, but not so much. But because we cannot make portal control of our patients with cobalt units. Uh, okay, that was, here are two, here are two slides telling what is contrast, definition of contrast. You should know that it's difficult to talk about that. You should just read. I, I leave my presentation, so if somebody would like to have it, you can copy it and you can, you can use it, of course. Oh, here is 
uh, here is uh, the pointer to that uh, to that uh, report. Is that report? You can find it in the internet at that website. Okay. Here is the uh, mm, definition of signal to noise ratio, and talking about kilovoltage and megavoltage images, I should say that contrast is better for kilovoltage radiation and signal to noise ratio is, is much better. If the noise is very high, then contrast is much poorer. So, so that's interrelated uh, values. Okay, and that's also another problem, quantum efficiency, how, how well radiation is uh, <clears throat> how to say that? Ah, well, I guess we'll get one English word about uh, is detected. Oh, how well radiation is detected. To get the enough good quality of image, you should deliver a given dose. So the smaller dose, the better. So the quantum efficiency describes that process. Yes? Can I pose a question on it? Yes. On image quality. Can you give us a few words on the MPF of the EP devices to measure? Modulation the transfer the function. Yes, that's well, in contrast for the To be honest, I'm not ready to answer such a complicated question, but telling in a simple way. Modulation transfer function is a fantastic function which describes the contrast and all these features of images. It tells us how different frequency of images, because image can be with Fourier transform transferred to the space of frequency are transferred from the object to image itself. We want to have all frequencies would be transferred in a perfect way, but it's not that way. High frequencies are usually transferred in a very poor way. So modulation transfer function describes how well we transfer different frequencies from image object to, to image. If you have an access to the book written by Jones and Cunningham, uh, um, Physics for Radiology, I, that's my personal opinion, that's one of the best books about physics. It's very old. But anyway, still, it's, it's really very good from physics point of view. There is a very nice chapter in that book well, describing modulation transfer function. It's not easy to understand, though, but if you read that chapter very carefully, I think you will be able to understand better that. OK? That's I can tell right now about it. OK? So. How we improve quality of our images? We just add some source of kilovoltage radiation to our accelerators. This is, here is the oldest solution proposed by Haynes and radiation. Just two sources of kilovoltage radiation and two detectors. And at once, we take two images, perpendicular images, and we can compare these images with uh, with DRR, with simulator images, that time mostly we use uh, simulator images. The same idea is, is used at CyberKnife. We have two uh, um, source of kilovoltage images. We have here in the floor, we have two detectors. The same is proposed by Brain Lab, the same is OK, that's, I have already talked about that. So 3D technology, 3D technology, the idea is exactly the same. From two perpendicular images, you have three coordinates. You have 
x, y, and z. But for 3D images, immediately you have three ED images. However, you have more problems. Because then you immediately will see that one object, if that fits to another one at one part of the body, it doesn't fit to in another part of the body. Why? I see that you become tired. And that's, that's also, yeah, I understand that. When you, if you listen very carefully, then, you know. No. Distortions, because patient body is not rigid object. So we want to, to, to fit just telling, in general, apples to plums or, yeah, because we have the object and we have the body place on the table and the patient was not only transferred, was only moved from the, the right position but also was distorted. If it's distorted, if you uh, match images at, at one part of the body, you cannot match them at another one. You have to, to decide how to match these two objects. But coming back to the, uh, well, to, 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 to real work, then you should place your patient again on the table. If you see the big difference between object and what is actual obtained, you should tell your technologies, you should place your patient again, because you cannot correct with moving the table. Because you just want to, to do something which is impossible to, to do. So we have 3D technology, which is Convin CT. All modern accelerators today are usually equipped with kilovoltage combin CT, which is just CT, but performed, made with combin, not with narrow beam. What makes that signal to noise ratio is higher because there is more uh, scatter radiation from such, uh, such a beam. Why I answered that question? Okay, so you have variant and you have uh, electa machines. And what is Interesting, it's possible also to make Combin CT with mega voltage radiation. <coughs> and for several years, I work with such a solution in Kielce because in program is that I'm the worker of Kielce Center, but currently I'm the worker, I'm the physicist working in Warsaw for Warsaw Cancer Center. So sorry. That's Okay, and but then we use mega voltage combin CT. Mega voltage combin CT, the image quality was worse in comparison to kilo voltage com combin CT. But anyway, we could see very well bones. So bones registration could be made very well with that solution, which is much cheaper with, with than with kilo voltage combin CT. The kilo voltage needs some extra equipment. For mega voltage, you have radiation, you have detector, but all accelerators are equipped with EPICs, so you can measure your images with that, with that solution. Here you have image quality from that accelerator. I think that you see very well bones. Of course, you can't see soft tissue. So the advantage of kilovoltage combin CT is that you can also overlay your images using the soft tissue, which is not simple. And decisions are not very simple if you try to, to match these images with soft tissue. And what, what is interesting, we uh, delivered only three monitor units for getting enough good image. So <coughs> those was not very very, very, uh, very big. <coughs> and also another very interesting solution is city on rays. City on rays is CT. When you get images from CT, you move the patient on the table. Table moves, okay? And you scan your patients. But with CT on rays, patient is at one place, but we move the gantry. And that solution was installed in Kielce. You have perfect images. The only problem is that you have to rotate the table. 
So there is some doubts about the positioning of a patient. But anyway, the quality of images is, is, is the best one you can have. OK? OK, just, just leave that. You can read it. and very modern solutions for, uh, for uh, positioning of the patient are uh, markers, markers placed inside of any organ. You can make two perpendicular images. You can overlay these images, and you can really say where is your object. Because please remember that we are not interested in bones, whether the bones are well related. Mm, they are in, in right place with respect to beam edges, we are interested about the target itself. Okay, so that's the way how we can trace the, the target. And we have also better markers, which are called transponders, which are let's say passive active. Uh, markers, there is electromagnetic wave, it activates these transponders, they respond and it's working like GPS. So we know in time with frequency of 10 times per second the position of these transponders. So we can instantly trace position of our object. The problem is that that solution is very, very expensive. So only in some centers that solution is, is used. There is another one which is Sentinel. Sentinel is laser system which trace the external surface of the body. In some sense, external surface of the body is, tells us how well the patient was set up. So in that way you can say whether your patient was set up properly or not properly. How how good was your your uh, setup? Coming to the to the summary, the modern radiotherapy is certainly image based, and CT information is the most important for radiotherapy. So CT information should be well. CTs you use should be checked. Should be well not only left to diagnostic department, it's also your task to be careful about these, uh, these tools. We have several solutions. We can visualize high contrast objects, I mean bones, gold markers, and we have with modern solution also visualize also soft tissue with kilovoltage or CT on, on rates. Uh, We can pre-irradiation get information. We don't know what's going on later on, but right now we can also just look at the patient all the time during the radiation, making images several seconds or with the GPS, with transponders, with markers, and with the skin as a surrogate of position of a, of a patient. Mm. But good news is that in more than 80% of cases, it's my estimation, conventional portal control with EPT is enough. The most important is are good protocols for that. About protocols, I will talk in the next part of that uh, presentation. So please remember that, again, not equipment is the most important. You are the most important in applying that solutions into radiotherapy. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.